In uh, previous videos we've shown how you can embed the uh, calendar control uh, onto the dialog and we've shown how you can for example do a uh, date picker to choose a the start date and end date of a uh, of a uh, trip. In this example here we're going to show a much more complex use of this control where we're going to actually display events on the calendar. So you can see here we've got a dialog control with just one control on it, uh, this uh, the calendar control over here. Now I'm going to go over to uh, working preview and what you see is uh, first of all the calendar looks much bigger than it previously uh, that you than you've previously seen it but also what you can see here is that on the calendar we're actually displaying all of the orders from uh, north winds from the sample north wind uh, uh, database that we ship with with alpha 5 so we're showing all of the orders that took place in august of 94 so you can see there's an order over there, order number 10248, and then if we go to this, um, uh, uh, the 8th of August, there were two orders over there, and if I go to the next month, I can see the orders for September, October, November, etc. So uh, we've now basically uh, used the um, event model of the calendar uh, control to do an AJAX callback each time we navigate to a new month, and in the callback, we're uh, doing a query against uh, the orders table in Northwind to get a list of the orders that took place on each day in the month. So uh, in this video and the subsequent video we're going to describe how um, we actually uh, coded up the functionality that you see over here. So the first thing I'd like to point out is I'm going to just go back to this calendar control and look at some of its properties. So you can see that um, uh, first, I've clicked on the draw box around dates uh, to put this uh, box that you see here around each of the dates. Then the next thing that I've done is I've said that the uh, class name for hover and selected is set to none, which is a non-existent uh, class name. So now when I put my mouse over any one of the dates, the normal behavior is to get um, a highlight um, of the cell and also when you click on a cell the normal behavior is to show that uh, cell being selected but I want to turn that behavior off so I've chosen two non-existent class names. Then for the um, item out of range I've chosen hidden item which if I go and look at properties here I can see that hidden item is nothing more than display none. So when I go back to working preview and I go to say let's go to this month, the hidden items are the days uh, in the first row here for the previous month. So uh, uh, over here I would see the three, day va three date values, actually four date values for August. Normally those would be displayed uh, in disabled um, uh, uh, using the disabled class but since I want to hide them completely I've set their class to uh, hidden so going back to controls over here and then finally in order to get um, this big box size over here I went to the date item style and I set the width to 1.5 inches and the height to 1.5 inches so that gave me the visual appearance that I wanted but of course it doesn't um, it didn't actually uh, put the events on the calendar. So to do that you can see I went to the has events checkbox and I checked that and then I defined two um, JavaScript functions called calendar draw item and calendar month navigate. So as you can imagine um, every time I navigate to a new month we're going to call this JavaScript function and every time an item is drawn we're going to call this JavaScript function. So what, what we mean by item being drawn is um, each one of these days is an item. So every time a new day is, um, is drawn we're going to call a JavaScript function and it's inside that JavaScript function that we do all the work that uh, displays the calendar over here. So let's pause now and pick it up in the next video.